<laughs> yes. yes. But like the comparison, like with me and some of the other guys. So that would be something neat to see, you know, the Harry Sanders. At- the Pirates playing in, in Williams. Welcome back for the second period. Coming up soon in a few months, the XFL. Which is this is actually- now our. Our third time talking about the XFL since the first episode. <laughs> right? Uh, they're actually expecting to start February 18th now of 23 to get, to get that going. Is that the uh, week after the Super Bowl? I think so. I want to say yes. I feel like that's a mistake. I thought the USFL did the right thing to wait a little bit. But the XFLs pretty much every time they ran, they ran right after the Super Bowl. So what do I know? Um, We're just here. So all all 43 games are going to air on ESPN, FX, and ABC. That's a heck of a deal because it's a five-year deal. It is the week right after the Super Bowl because I just looked it up. Um, Uh, uh, The Super Bowl is February 12th, and they're starting the following Saturday. So basically, that end of the week. And yeah, so, between uh, ABC, ESPN, ESPN Two, ESPN Plus, and FX. Five year deal for all that. That's pretty good. Um, and I gotta be honest. I think a lot of this is because it's it's Dwayne the Rock Johnson. He's he's probably the most famous actor in Hollywood at the at the moment. Um. Everyone knows who The Rock is, if you smell what I'm cooking. Um, (laughs) Throws little lines in there. I had to, yeah. Um, But I guess the big news at this point is that they finally announced the team names and released at least some concept of what the logos are going to look like and the team colors. So let's knock this out real quick. Uh, The Arlington Renegades were previously the Dallas Renegades. Uh, the DC Defenders is carried over from XFL 2.0 from the 2020 season. The Houston Roughnecks are coming back from the 2020 season. The Orlando Guardians were previously the New York Guardians. Um, what else do we got here? The St. Louis Battlehawks carried over. The from San- 2020. Yep. San Antonio Brahmas is a new entry. Into so... The mix. So here's a fun thing. I didn't know until this that San Antonio was known for Brahma Bulls. I just assumed they were the San Antonio Brahmas because The Rock called himself the Brahma Bull. You're not the only one. I thought the same thing. I thought a the lot same of people exact thought thing. It, though. I thought the exact same thing you did on that one. Just because of that. Because I did not know that San Antonio was known for Brahma Bulls. I didn't know that either. It, it took comments on Uniwatch, cheap plug, uh, to <laughs> get me to learn that. But no, I thought the same <laughs> thing too. When when they said the San Antonio Brahmas, I'm thinking, ha ha ha. They named it after Dwayne Johnson, ha ha ha. But no, I, yeah, <laughs> never knew. You're not the only uh, one. I love this on Uniwatch. Uh, they're the Seattle Sea Dragons, previously the Seattle Dragons. Parenthetical, but now apparently they've learned to swim. That killed me when I read the article. That was um, funny. And was the funny. Vegas Vipers were previously the Tampa Bay Vipers. I think the Vegas Vipers actually, the name fits more because of the it, desert. It, it flows better, yeah. Rather than the Tampa Bay Vipers. They. Um, they. So looking at the logos for the announced teams, there's some I really like. There's some that I'm not super crazy about. I think DC has a really cool logo in that it looks three-dimensional. Yeah, it has the, you know, the D, and then in the middle of the D is the C with the star. Yeah, and the shadowing of the D makes it look like it's popped out a little bit. Um, the Roughnecks is pretty interesting because they took a logo that the previous incarnation of the, of the XFL got sued for and they altered it because I I don't just enough that it looks like an H 
and an oil rig, not just an oil rig like the old Houston Oilers logo. <laughs> hey, you got to do just enough to pass, you know, to pass that, you know, level. The Guardians looks basically like a Predators logo. <laughs> yeah. Well, we skipped over Dal. We skipped over Arlington. It's a super plain logo. It's fine. For it's, what an it is. it's an R. It's an R and R. an A. It's an R. The Battlehawks is pretty much the same logo. Not a, too much is different about it. It looks cool. And you got the Brahmas. Brahma Bull, you know, basically it's. I do That's like how one of the ones the... I don't like. It's it's almost too simplistic. Too minimalist. But it kind of And I would fits. Ass- I would assume that the the horns of the Brahma bull are going to be on the helmet. That makes the most sense to me. You would think. You would think. Uh the Sea Dragons is fine. It's a dragon in the shape of an S. I like the green and and orange colors. I think that's pretty cool with the dark blue. The Vipers is really vanilla really plain jane yeah it's not even it's i mean it i understand where they're going with it but it's just you would think they'd want something to i don't know, make it pop more I, I think my favorite logo has to go to the houston roughnecks because it ties in there's historical ties to that logo it looks like an oil rig, which Houston was known for. So I think that gets my overall nod. DC is a close second. I like the DC logo a lot. I do like the DC just because it's, it does, like you said, it does make it you know pop more. It pops, yeah. The Guardians, like you said, kind of looks like the Predators logo. <laughs> I'm kind of curious to see how that dark green and the neon green is going to play off on TV. That's going to look like puke. Well, what's... I mean, I don't understand, like, the logo, like, where they get that from Orlando. I don't know. Uh, And I can't really read the... uh, Well, the inscriptions really don't have much, you know... Like much of the wildlife in Florida, the mysterious guardians are relentless and unforgiving. Okay. Uh, to be fair, what do predators have to do with Nashville? But apparently, it works there. It does. Uh, I think the Vipers are my least favorite. It's it's an awful plain logo. It doesn't look inspiring at all. The Sea Dragons. I mean, it, it almost kind of reminds me with basically the Kraken, how they're, you know, how the NHL is doing it. Yeah. With the S. Uh, where's it at here? But, I mean, Come more on. more spring football isn't a bad thing. Um, well, when's the, when's the USFL kicking off again? Uh... Let's find out. I do know that the USFL is moving to three satellite hubs now this season. So there's going to be three different cities hosting games. They have not posted an updated schedule. Yeah, because I'm just uh, second season. Yeah, just regular season April to June. So sometime in April, maybe. That's what it sounds like. I thought I'm trying, I'm trying to remember when it started last year. It started April 16th, end of July 3rd. So we're probably looking at probably the same, the same schedule. Yeah. Probably the same run of it. So I wonder Look, how I, long, I, I just wonder how long the XFL is going to go. So, because if, I wonder if there's going to be a conflict between the two. Yeah. Anything's possible. and Because right now, everybody's used to college football on Saturday, NFL on Sunday. Well, that's so, during the fall. This is going to be spring. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, is it going to be the same concept where 
One's going to be Sunday. One's going to be Saturday. Well, here's another idea. Who's going to be watching? Because barely anyone watched the USFL. And the USFL was on Fox and NBC. The XFL is going to be on twice the amount of channels that the USFL is on and probably on at the same time. So the few... The few viewers who care about spring football at the moment, because I do think spring football is something viable that could be successful. The few who are watching at the moment are going to be split between the XFL and the USFL, unless there's some really crazy holdouts for the USFL from 2020 that hung on to hope that it would come back after COVID. And really, that's the only thing that killed the second US, or XFL is COVID. Because the ratings yeah. were there the second time around. People were buying into it the second time around because they were smart. They played in, in soccer stadiums. They didn't play in big cavernous football stadiums. It worked. And plus also Small. I think why people are going to look at that more is because of, well, who else? Dwayne Johnson. Well, and, and going back to, to ratings and people watching, a spring football league playing in a smaller 20,000 to 10,000 seat soccer stadium looks better on TV. Because, I mean, full. some of those XFL or some of those USFL games this year were sad. It looked like nobody was in there. Because they're playing in a huge stadium. And, and they were trying been... to move people to one end of the stadium for camera purposes. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think I think yeah, soccer it... stadiums for spring football is the way to go. It looks better on TV. It's it and it makes it look it makes it look full. It makes it look energetic. Yeah, because some of the games for USFL, like you said, did look sad. I... There might have been twelve people at some of those games. They lost some money if on that, that this year. Well, were they racing uh, to to cash their paychecks? Well, Fox owns it, so I would assume no. They weren't <laughs> racing. For those of you who don't know, that was from uh, Small Potatoes. Oh, one of the best, one of the best ESPN Thirty for Thirty documentaries. That was a good one. That was a very good one. And it was interesting just to know all that deep insight on. On what it was then. Yeah, it was successful for some time then, and people got involved. We'll just leave it at that. Um, Fun times. Well, the XFL is coming. Spring Whether football, you like it or not, <laughs> it's on its way. No two ways about it. February 18th is when it's looking to start. Start date, eh, right after a Super Bowl. I wonder. Just thinking this now, I wonder how much advertising they're going to be doing through the Super Bowl now. Who carries the Super Bowl this year, though? Who has the rights to air it? Because uh, that's going to be. Three. Oh, come on. CBS carries the rights. Hmm. So you probably won't see any Super Bowl ads, dur or you probably won't see any XFL yeah. ads during the Super Bowl, but I can guarantee you, I bet from December on, you will see XFL ads all over ESPN, obviously. Yes. Of course. Oh, yeah. and uh, Yeah. Yeah, I thought, for some reason, I don't know why, I thought Fox covered them. For some reason, I thought Fox covered the Super Bowl. Oh, uh, it alternates. Mm. It alternates between. Uh, shoot, who all carries it now? Um, Fox, CBS, and there's the third one. And I'm not sure who the third one is at this point, if it's NBC or, AB, or, or ABC. I wonder if I think it's NBC. Because NBC normally carries, isn't it Sunday Night Football? Okay, here's the breakdown. We got we got the official breakdown. Okay. So last season was Fox, then it goes to, to CBS, then back to Fox, NBC, ABC, 
CBS, Fox, NBC, ABC, CBS, Fox, and NBC. So that's that's ten years. Jeez. <laughs> so we NBC or ABC won't have it until twenty twenty seven. It's going to bounce back and forth between Fox, CBS, and NBC until then. That's insane. Yeah, that it is. On that note, XFL's on its way. Spring football. We'll be right back. 